So the glycemic index, and, and most people, like the, ex, the doctors out there talking about this, will tell you it's, it's how it affects your blood sugar. It's not. Glycemic index is only a measure of how quickly a substance lets go of the carbohydrates, how quickly they're available to your body, okay? That doesn't mean it's how quickly they're gonna impact or how much it's gonna impact your bloodstream. Two different things. Why are they different things? I'll demonstrate for you, okay? So, here I've got two different foods, okay? These are carbohydrates. Can everyone see there's more carbohydrates here than here? Everyone see that? Okay. I want you to tell me which of these two foods has the higher glycemic index. Ready? So we're going to, you know, I'm going to let, letting go is going to be eating the food. That's when they become available, start being available to the body. Tell me which one has a higher glycemic index. Anybody? No. Right hand, left hand? Right. Right, right hand? Higher glycemic index because it lets go of the carbohydrates very quickly. That's all it's telling us. Now, which of these things, which of these two substances do you think is going to have more of an impact on your blood sugar or might have more impact on your blood sugar? Right. The right? Well, this, this releases sugars quickly. Let's change this. Okay. There's this. Or there's this. Which has the higher glycemic index? The right. Which one do you think might impact blood sugar more? What do you mean impact? I mean impact. How much, how much is it going to affect your blood sugar? The right? No. The left. The left. Why the left? Because it's got 20 times more sugar. Okay? These are, these are measures of carbohydrates, you know, any measure you want. 10 gram increments. This has got 10 grams. This has got 200. This releases those 10 grams, make those 10 grams available to your body very quickly. But this 200 grams, even if it's a little more slowly, there's 20 times more carbohydrate there. Okay? Can everyone see that? So glycemic index is only a measure of how quickly a substance lets go of the carbohydrates. But it is Hang, hang on, I'm taking questions later. Okay, I'm probably going to cover your questions. Watermelon, so glycemic index, 0 to 100. Watermelon, 72. Now, anything above 70 is considered high glycemic index. Watermelon's high glycemic index. If you have a blood sugar issue, you need to avoid watermelon. That's what doctors will tell you. That's what, that's what the experts say. It's not what I would say. Most people can eat watermelon with no problem, no matter what their blood sugar issues are. Why? What is watermelon primarily comprised of? Water. Water, 90, 92%. What's next? Fiber. What's next? After fi fiber's next, what's next? Next is sugar. There's not that much sugar in it. It's mostly water and fiber. So even though the carbohydrates are available quickly, there's not that much there, okay? So it doesn't have a significant impact on blood sugar. Does this make sense? So everyone out there talking about glycemic index, and this is a high glycemic index food, and fruits are high glycemic index foods. Most of them aren't, by the way. Watermelon is. Not all fruits are. Some of them are moderate glycemic index foods. But it doesn't matter because the glycemic index doesn't say much. What we really want to know is how is it going to impact our blood sugar? So someone came up with a different measure. It's called the glycemic load. So what's glycemic load? Anyone? Anyone want to guess? Yeah, the amount of sugar the food has. The amount of sugar the food has? No. Um, it's part of it, but it's not all of it. Because in the same way that how quickly something releases the sugar doesn't really tell us how it's going to affect us, how much sugar something has, it's really carbohydrate, not sugar. 
Okay, it's measuring carbohydrate, not sugar. Well, how does that help us? Because all complex carbohydrates are broken down into what? Sugars. Sugars. You know, it's funny because 20, 25, 30 years ago, even today, I mean, a lot of people think about like complex carbohydrate, but it became a big deal at that time. And people would say to me, well, if you're not eating, if you're only eating fruit and salad, how are you going to get your complex carbohydrates? I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Do I need those? How, wow. Do you, need, do you need them? Can your body use complex carbohydrates? It cannot. It has to break them down into sugars. That's what the body's looking for. Okay? The only thing we can do with complex carbohydrates is break them down. So if we're measuring how much complex carbohydrate has, now in this example, I, you know, I suggested that maybe this hand would have more an impact on blood sugar than this one. This, this food, because it has more. But we can't know that because it has more, it will. Because what if this food released the carbohydrates in five seconds, and this one took 50 years? Okay? There's 20 times more carbohydrate, but it's going to take millions times longer to release them. So if they're released slowly over the course of millions of times longer, they're probably not going to impact the blood sugar at all. Can you see that? So what we want is something that actually looks at those two things. The glycemic load takes the glycemic index, which is how quickly it releases the sugar, and it multiplies it by the amount of sugar in the food. It's the percentage of the food that's sugar. It's, it's actually the number of grams of sugar, of carbohydrate, in 100 grams of food, which is the percentage. So if something has 5 grams of carbohydrate and 100 grams of food, it's 5% carbohydrate, right? You multiply the five, that 5% five times the glycemic index, and you get the glycemic load. Does this make sense so far? Okay, that's how glycemic load was determined. So you're taking the amount of carbohydrate it has, and you're looking at it relative to how quickly it lets go of the sugar. So if it has a lot of carbohydrate and lets go of it very quickly, it's going to have a big impact on blood sugar. Okay? If it has a little bit, it has a lot of carbohydrate and lets go of it very slowly, it may have much less impact on, it will have much less impact on blood sugar. And then we have all these combinations. Okay? But that's how glycemic load was determined. Is it perfect? Maybe not. There may be factors we're not even aware of. Okay? There's one factor I'll mention later, but there may be other things we, we don't even, haven't even thought about yet. There may be things that impact how quickly this happens and what's happening, you know, what's going on there. But this is a simplistic way of looking at it that works pretty well. So when we look at the glycemic load of watermelon, which is looking at the fact that it's, it releases carbohydrates quickly but doesn't have very much, what's the glycemic load likely to be? What do you think? High, medium, low? What would you guess? The glycemic load for watermelon. No, no. You think it might be low? Well, so the glycemic load chart is very different than the index. Zero to 100 is the index. The chart says zero to nine is low, 10 to 19 is moderate, and 20 and above is high. The glycemic load of watermelon is three, maybe four. I forget if it's three or four. Okay, it's not even halfway up the low section of the low chart, of the low range, right? The low section of the range. So how much impact could it have on blood sugar?